Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn. And today's episode, we're talking about the Seattle Seahawks 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the show, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. All that stuff out of the way, let's get to all the picks in the draft. So first off, we have LJ uh, Collier in terms of his... Uh, Market share data, he had a 34.70 solo tackle score, 35.53 sack score, and 38.23 tackle for loss score. Uh, based on the thresholds at the position, all pro and pro bowl, he doesn't hit any of the all pro or pro bowl thresholds. And when you look at the averages, woefully below what the averages are in terms of all pro and pro bowl potential. And when you look at athleticism data, 84.72 in terms of explosiveness, 72.23 in terms of speed, and 27.62 in terms of flexibility for his size. He does have good explosion and speed traits, but his flexibility traits are the biggest issue in his athletic testing. Hit starter potential, but does not hit all pro or pro bowl area uh, in terms of flexibility. And there's never been a multiple all pro, multiple pro bowl edge rusher with his flexibility testing the way it is. Um, I think best case scenario with LJ Collier is that he can become you know a starter at the very least. But again, this is someone who is not going to be a multiple all-pro, multiple Pro Bowl player. It just is not statistically possible based on the data. So he's definitely someone that I think was a bit of a reach and probably someone who should have went day two or day three in all actuality based on his overall data. Then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Marquise Blair, safety out of Utah. When you look at his production data, 45.02 in terms of solo tackle data. 29.46 in terms of interception data and 33.20 in terms of pass deflection data. Doesn't hit the all pro thresholds he needs to hit nor the pro bowl thresholds. You look at the averages, he runs into a lot of issues with the averages. Uh, and I think overall he does have good athleticism traits, but he just doesn't have the production traits indicative of a really great safety. So um, he's someone again that I think probably a bit of a reach uh, in many ways and he does have good athleticism traits and I don't have a full athletic profile on him, but His production is just not where it needs to be So he's definitely someone that probably should have went a lot later um, than early based on overall data And of course we get to DK Metcalf wide receiver out of Ole Miss when you look at his production data 51.24 out of a hundred uh, didn't hit the the average All-Pro score, average Pro Bowl score, average starter score, and when you look at the thresholds of the position, did not hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter area. In many ways, he shares many similarities with Cradell Patterson in terms of his production and in terms of athleticism traits, very similar in terms of really great explosion traits, you know, 99 percentile explosion, 99 percentile speed, but his flexibility testing is woefully below where it needs to be <clears throat> in many ways. So he could end up becoming a starter um, very easily, you know, someone that can that can be uh, impactful. I really do believe that. I really do believe DK Metcalf can be an impactful wide receiver. But if you think this is someone that is going to be a multiple all-pro, multiple Pro Bowl wide receiver, and I'm not talking about just one season. I'm talking about consistently being a special wide receiver at the next level. His data just does not suggest that based on his production data. And his athleticism data does have some question marks here and there, especially when it comes to flexibility testing. And then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Cody Barton, linebacker out of Utah. When you look at his production data, 87.44 out of 100. In terms of solo tackle data, doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, does hit above the Pro Bowl threshold. And when you look at the averages, doesn't hit the all-pro average, but does hit close to the Pro Bowl average and is definitely above the starter average at the position. When you get to athleticism beta, 32.33 in terms of explosiveness, 64.61 in terms of speed, and 92.11 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't hit all the areas he needs to hit in terms of Pro Bowl potential, in terms of the thresholds due to explosiveness, but definitely hits all the starter areas. And I'd say that's the best sort of case for Cody Barton. I think there's a very good shot he becomes a long-term starting linebacker at the position based on his uh, production testing and his athleticism testing. And that's definitely the more reasonable expectation for him. Uh, then, of course, we get to Gary Jennings, uh, wide receiver out of West Virginia. When you look at his production data, 52.99 in terms of a passing yards market share. Doesn't hit any of the thresholds he needs to hit. And, of course, when you go to the averages, woefully below what the averages are in terms of all-pro potential, pro potential, starter potential. 
He does have good athleticism traits, 92.92 in terms of explosiveness, 93.89 in terms of speed, and 64.6 uh, and 64.59 in terms of flexibility for his size. All are good athleticism marks, but he just doesn't have the production indicative of a really great player. So in many ways, he's kind of like DK Metcalf in terms of athleticism, uh, you know, like a like a less athletic DK Metcalf but doesn't have the same production in, that he needs to hit. So it's a very similar type of profile in terms of based on data. So the Seahawks seem to have a type that they're going after in terms of athletes, but they're not going after the right production. You know, they're not looking at production in the right way, just based on the overall data. Then, of course, we get to Phil Hayes, offensive guard out of Wake Forest. When you get to his uh, athleticism data, 95.30 in terms of explosiveness. 83.77 in terms of speed and 70.02 in terms of flexibility for his size. It's all the all pro thresholds, pro bowl thresholds and starter thresholds that he needs to hit in. And when you look at the averages, the averages he's closer to a starter than he is an all pro or pro bowl player based on his flexibility testing. But he still could easily be an all pro or pro bowl type guard given the right situation. So I would say the best case scenario is he definitely has at least a very, very good shot of becoming a long term starter at the position but also has a chance to be even better than that based on really great explosion testing and speed testing. So he's just a really great pick all around. Probably one of the better picks the Seahawks made in this draft in many ways. And then, of course, you get to uh, Ugo Amadi, safety out of Oregon. He gets his production data 32.57 in terms of solo tackle data, 81.19 in terms of interception data, and 66.67 in terms of pass deflection data. Doesn't hit the all-pro thresholds or pro-bowl thresholds in terms of his overall production data. And when you look at the averages, his solo tackle data is woefully below what the averages are at in terms of all pro, pro bowl, and starter. And you look at athleticism data, hit a 35.65 explosion score, 79.65 speed score, and 60.02 flexibility score. Doesn't hit the all pro thresholds or pro bowl thresholds in terms of athleticism, but does hit at least the starter thresholds. And I would say that's the best case scenario for Ugo Amadi. Has a chance to become a long term starter, but just doesn't have great production traits or great athleticism traits to indicate someone that's going to become a special special safety at the next level um, could be a starter definitely but special special outcomes are definitely less likely in his profile and of course you get to Ben Burke Kervin linebacker out of Washington when you get to his uh, solo tackle data 98.05 in terms of his production score hits the all pro, th all pro threshold pro bowl threshold starter threshold and hits above all the averages in terms of all pro potential, pro bowl potential, and starter potential. And when you look at athleticism data, 62.33 in terms of explosiveness, 86.99 in terms of speed, and 95.69 in terms of flexibility for his size. Ben Burke is by far probably the best pick the Seahawks had in this draft class. Great production profile, great athleticism profile, and I would say he definitely is going to have to fight to get a spot on this roster, you know, because he's such a, uh, a later round pick. But I think that despite that, he definitely has a shot to, to at least carve out a niche and become a starter or even better than that. So look out for Ben Burke Irvin because he definitely has a really, really great overall profile. And I think he will be successful after he finally proves the coaches wrong because of how low he was drafted. Then, of course, you get to Travis Homer, running back out of Miami. When you get to his market share data, 57.47 in terms of his production data. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, five-time Pro Bowl threshold, but does hit about the three-time Pro Bowl threshold. Um, when you look at the averages at the position, doesn't hit above the all-pro average, Pro Bowl average, or starter average. But when you get to athleticism data, 83.74 in terms of explosiveness, 57.84 in terms of speed, and 43.50 in terms of flexibility for his size. Has a good athleticism profile. Very similar to Alvin Kamara, actually, in terms of his athleticism profile. So he's very explosive, above average speed, Below average flexibility, very good shot. He could become a long-term starter, but there's a lot of competition on, on this uh, Seahawks uh, running back group. So we'll see what happens with him, but this is not the best roster for him to end up on. I mean, Travis Homer would have been better off going to like the Raiders or a team that just doesn't already have an established back uh, because he definitely had, he's not the best running back on paper ever. And there's running backs on the Seahawks roster that just have better traits on paper than him. So We'll see what happens to him, but definitely this isn't the best landing spot for him. And of course, you get to Demarcus Christmas, defensive tackle out of Florida State. When you get to his production data, 
in terms of solid tackle data, 17.35 in terms of sack data, and 25.72 in terms of tackle for loss data. Doesn't hit the all pro threshold or pro bowl threshold, but does hit at least the starter thresholds at the position. And average wise, doesn't really hit anywhere near the averages that he needs to hit. In terms of athleticism data, 9.11 in terms of uh, explosion. 45.10 in terms of speed and 5.10 in terms of flexibility for a size. Woefully below all the averages. You know, the average uh, all pro slash pro bowl score and the average starter score in terms of athleticism, nowhere near those averages. So definitely someone who has concerning athleticism traits. So more likely a backup in many ways uh, than anything else. But we'll see what happens with Demarcus Christmas. Has a great name, of course, but his overall data suggests someone who's more likely going to be a backup to reserve type. Then, of course, we get to John Ursua, wide receiver slash uh, pocket tight end out of Hawaii. When you look at his production, he has 78.90 in terms of his passing yards mark share production. Doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, but does hit at least above the three-time Pro Bowl and long-term starter area. When you look at the averages, he's closer to the starter average than the Pro Bowl average or All-Pro average. And in terms of athleticism traits, there is not a whole lot of data on him based on athleticism, but he does have at least some good athleticism traits overall. So when you look at the Seattle Seahawks draft class, uh, there are some positives here. I think Ben Burke Irving is a great pick for them. Phil Hayes is another great pick for them. But the rest of the class is definitely inconsistent. Uh, there are some players that I think could carve out a niche. Travis Homer is one of those types of players. You know who could like carve out a niche? John Ursua from Hawaii. You know it's kind of a later round pick for them, but it just remains to be seen. I, I would say the the picks that are really gonna have the most impact long term are mostly the picks that were taken in day three, which is not the best sign ever. But I still think there are some positives from this class. So if Phil Hayes and Ben Burke Kirvin become long term starters or better, this class is gonna look a lot better than it is. But if they don't become long-term starters, if they run into the issue of being a later round pick so they don't get as many opportunities to start, then this class could look a lot worse than it already is. So this is not the best class ever. There are some positives here, but they could have done a lot better. And I feel like they're doing something with data, but I don't think that they're really hitting all the marks they need to hit in terms of their overall data evaluation. So. It's always kind of hard to see what the Seahawks do anymore because they seem to, on the one hand, draft really athletic players, but then draft really unathletic players. And one, on one hand, they might draft a really productive player, but then they draft a really unproductive player. So it's really inconsistent in terms of what they like to do during the draft. It always makes them unpredictable, which is not always the best thing in terms of being really great at the draft when you're unpredictable in some ways. So, uh, but yeah, but overall, it was an okay class, but not the best. And of course, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace!